Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in Alhamdulillah ala mustad Abu Barah Muhammad Ambriki Inshallah this video is titled uh, How to learn Arabic Learn and review Arabic language Basically with a busy schedule Going to college Going to school Have a job Very busy Or uh, at home taking care of the kids all day How to study Arabic With a busy schedule uh, inshallah tabarik Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you see in Quran a Quran didn't come down in one book the Quran was not revealed all in one book and this is some wisdom in this on how to study how to learn how to review with a very busy, busy schedule first thing first the Quran did not come down all in one book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent down the Quran in different stages the Quran being revealed in different stages, in different time, in different period, different stages, different amount of verses, like this. There's a wisdom in this when it comes to learning and reviewing. And if you look at the Quran, it has what? 30 juice. And each juice has a certain amount of section. This also goes back to how to read Quran, how to revise Quran, how to memorize Quran, and how to revise it, and how to read it. One little by little, or shaitan for shaitan, as we say in Arabic, shaitan for shaitan, step by step, or by stages, by steps. So, learning Arabic is the same thing. How do you learn Arabic with a busy schedule? Next, let's look at the Prophet. When the Quran was revealed to him, it didn't come down in one book, and he was 40 years old. And he was what? He was 40 years old when the Quran was revealed to him. At the end of his life, he reached about the age of 60 between 60 or 63 and some scholars differ the age that he died at between 60 or 63 right three years right hijri years or, or, or lunar years right so the prophet sallam, that his prophethood wasn't for a long time you know his prophethood didn't start when he was 20 years old but when he was 30 years old it started when he was 40 years old and it ended at his death when he was between 60 to 63 years old so looking at that, there's wisdom on how do we learn. The verses of Quran came down to the Prophet while he was in doing things. And at certain situations, the Quran was revealed. So that means that you don't have to be in a sitting or in a setting to learn. A certain type of setting to learn. That's the first thing that we need to look at in the wisdom. Looking at the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, was Sira Rahu and his Sira, Fi Sira Tihi, and his Sira are about learning and how to learn. The Prophet didn't, for example, was in the school while he was sitting in the classroom and the revelations were revealed to him. He was actually in the field. He was out there in the field when the revelations came to him. And he was 40 years old when he came to the Quran. If it goes back to the Quran, memorizing the Quran. You don't have to be a two, three years old to memorize the Quran or in your young age to start memorizing the Quran. When the Quran was revealed to the Prophet and he was 40 years old and he was in the field. He was in the field. Right? They was engaged in things when the ayats were coming down to him. So we're going to look at this when it comes to how do we learn. You don't have to be in a classroom setting to learn, actually. So how do you learn and how do you review uh, related to Arabic language? Related to the Arabic language. So first thing first, as long as you get a class and you have a very busy schedule, a class related to Arabic language, if it's once a week and you're very busy and that's all you can get, then we could take, you could use much of that particular time. Once or twice a week for an hour or two hours, uh, once a week, two hours, once a week in the classroom setting, meaning getting instruction from a teacher, and that's all you have. La bas, la bas, la bas, la mosquita. No problem. You know, this is not no problem. Alhamdulillah. You know, uh, 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 you know uh, risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, provision is from Allah. But Allah, when He want to bestow you upon something for you, you know, this is from Allah, so the Muslim, the first thing he needs to do is, you know, really make dua. Make dua, ask Allah to increase him in knowledge, you know. Ask Allah to increase you in knowledge and increase you in beneficial knowledge. Increase you in knowledge or increase you in beneficial knowledge. And that's related to the religion of Islam. So the Arabic language is part of that beneficial knowledge. So if that's all you have, la bus, no problem. If you're in a school, you're busy, you have a job, you have a nine to five, or you're a sister, you're a sister at home, you have children in your house, and you don't have a lot of time to study due to your children, 
they distract you and things like that. This video is for you, all you guys. So back to the Arabic language, if you are studying in a class or online or in the classroom or in the master Arabic language, uh, an hour or two hours a week or more or less, then you sure have a lot of time during the week. Uh, this is some advice I gave to one of my students who was 50 years old and he had problems reading Quran and he wanted to know how to alphabet the Arabic letters, some things about Arabic grammar. So I, I gave him a schedule that really worked for me. And I looked for a schedule that worked for me and a schedule I looked that would work for him in this time. So basically he was a brother and he was working more than eight hours a day. He was more, uh, including traveling to work and coming home and the hours in the work, eight hours in work and maybe about four hours traveling back and forth, right? So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours a day he was outside the home. And he usually only come to visit me once a week for an hour or an hour and a half, two hours top or most time one hour and an hour and a half so how do you learn like this in the class one hour and it's basically what you do every day with the arabic it's basically what you do every day with the arabic language and how you spend your free time in a house you know i tell anybody who wants to learn anything related to the religion anything new is what you do with your free time your downtime so I say first, if you're a very serious student and you're eager and you have, uh, you don't, uh, you have limited time and you, your classroom time that you're learning is a little bit, then make all your free time learning time. If you have free time in your house, for example, to run the internet or to surf the internet or to watch TV, take that time for studying. Take that time for studying and reviewing. It doesn't take a lot of time to review. You can review every day for 10 minutes or 20 minutes a day. And reviewing... It's like exercising, you know. I never did push-ups before. I start doing push-ups. I'm not gonna be able to do 50 push-ups, 100 push-ups a day. But first time me starting push-ups, I might be able to do 10. So, but 10 a day, 10 a day each day, it starts up to something. But maybe 10, 10 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, 10 at night, you start something. You start building yourself. 10 in the morning, 10 in the, 10 in the afternoon, 10 at night. You start building you something. You do this every day and you have a routine that 10 could be maybe 30 a day, 40 a day, 50 a day after a month. Mm -hmm. After a month. So studying is just like this. If you got 5 to 10 minutes a day, then you should take your notes, whatever you learned in that lesson, from lesson 1 always to the last lesson, you view them 2 or 3 times a day. 2 or 3 times a day. If you at school or you at a job, you're in your break, you got a lunch break, then you should spend... If your lunch break is 15 minutes, then you should spend at least 10 of that minutes in studying in the last five minutes eating or whatever. So if you have, a, for example, an hour lunch break, you can take about 30 minutes of that break or 20 minutes of that break, and you can use it for studying. How do you study? You take your last lesson, your first lesson to your last lesson, and you just take it and you review. I tell my students, if they're in a the class and they're studying and they have this a job they have to go to, you should take their notes their lessons and put it on flashcards. Put it on flashcards. You should take their lessons, put it on flashcard or a small notebook and take these lessons and take these lessons and bring them with them um, to their job. For example, I'll show you an example. Now this is my um, supply bag, right? I go, I go shopping for my kids to buy school supplies this is actually my supply bags. I got some work I have to actually do, some studying and reviewing I have to do. So, you know, I had this up here for a long time. So it's now it's time to break it out. You know, how do you actually study and review? So this is one of my bags, right? It got my supplies I'm, I bought, I purchased to use just for this, right? So I'm thinking right now, I'm talking about it. I got this thing sitting up there for a while. Now, how I study and the person in the beginning studying, it might not be the same, you know? It might not be the same. All right, so I'm going to show you what I have here. I'm definitely going to need pens. I don't have no pens with me in this bag. I keep my pens somewhere else. So if you notice here, I have a, a card file, all right? Now I have, this is like the first method I did for reviewing when I started learning Arabic, right? I took this method. 
cards, index cards. So I have a bunch of index cards here. And they have index cards now when you can buy the index card in spiral, spiral index cards. I don't have none with me. I think one of my kids, they like that stuff. But make sure it's spiral. They have like small um, notebooks, notepads that's small like this you can open up. You can use those, but I don't like them because the pages fall out. You need something that you can turn a lot and that the page is not going to fall out. So I prefer the, 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 the um, uh, index cards, even the spiral ones. And or if I don't have the spiral index cards, I use a, a file, a card file, right? So this is how you study, especially in the beginning of Arabic. The grammar, you take each rule, one rule, put it here. It could be the same thing for vocab. Now each rule that you're going to put each lesson or each rules you learn in a lesson, you put them in an order on the card, right? So you write each lesson one by one. Bold print on the or in the print where it's not too small, the eyes are not straining to look at it and read it. You write it legible, easy to read, big if you have to. Online, neat, very neat on the line, very neat, very clear. If the lessons are very long, shorten the words if you have to, shorten the phrases. You can use the front and the back of the card. And every new lesson that you get, new lesson and old lesson, the, the old lessons. Right, you start writing the new lessons, and the new card, always put it on top. When you get a new lesson, always put it on the top. When you get new lessons, always put it on the top. Right? So when you start reviewing, you're reading the first the, the new lesson all the way back to the old lesson. That's the way I used to do it. And then when you're reading, how many times you read? If I'm going to work, I got 15, 20 minute break, depending on how many lessons you have with you. You need to read, you could go through it just like that. You read the card, you're reading it. And if you have two or three breaks, you do it for two or three breaks. If you're in college, you're going to school, or you're going to work, you could do this on the bus. You could do it while you're commuting, especially if you're not driving. If you're taking uh, public transportation, if you can take a few minutes, pop it out, especially if it's a spiral index cards, and just read it and put it back in your pocket. Even for Hadith. Any for IS and Quran. And then I like big cards. This big cards is something for something else. I use this for vocabulary. This is I use this right here for vocab slash um, bookmarks when I'm reading books and stuff that I'm studying. This is bookmark slash uh, uh, vocab words that I'm reading books and fit that I gotta look up or the important words I need to memorize. I use this when I'm reading stuff like that. All right? So here's a spiral notebook, and this is a spiral notebook. Also, sometimes I, I put notes in here, and I travel with it. I take certain notes, I put in here, I travel through it. I like this because it's rough. As you see, I never opened it up yet, never used it yet. I'm not planning to use it no time soon, right? Because I, I usually put uh, my notes in my books that I'm learning in, actually, right? But when I want to take up some new things, new notes, new notes, new subjects I'm learning, I put it in a book like this, spiral notebook. And then I just review it. And I try not to write th that many stuff in this book that's not about the content I'm using it for. All right? All right? Because I have done that in the past. And, 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 um, and I get, then I have the book. And I put some other notes that have nothing to do with the subject. And then I'm looking to put the notes for this subject all in one book. I have half the page, the notes I need, and then half the page, some other stuff that has nothing to do with the topic. So now I just buy a lot of these of a book or subject I'm studying, I have to put the words in there or whatever, I put it in something like this and I can travel with this, you know? I can actually travel with this. And then I can flip it a lot and the page is not gonna come out. I can flip it for one month, do it this for a month or two, and the page is not gonna come out, all right? So you start with something like this, or the actual book that you're studying yourself, if you can travel with it, if it's not gonna get destroyed, if it's not too big, but you could, you could write your notes, like I said, on the index card. This is how you learn Arabic on the go. You learn grammar of Arabic on the go. It's how you're a busy mom and you have all the kids and you need to study. Or you are going to college or you go to work and you need to study. So what you have to do, every day, study at least. Every day, 10 minutes. 
to 20 minutes. 10 minutes to 20 minutes. If you have a, a time, 10 minutes, you can sit down for 10 minutes and review your notes going back and forth for 10 minutes. Do it two times a day. Two times a day. And then that when you and when you get new lessons, like I said, new lessons on front. Got a new lesson. It always when you go back to do it over again to read, the new lesson is right there in front of your face. It's the first thing you do. Now they said when you when you learning, it takes some time for the words to things you're learning to go in your long-term memory. So when you learn something the first time and you see it for the first time, it goes in your short-term memory. The point of this exercise or memorizing or studying like this, reviewing like this, you, and you're putting the new lessons here and the old lessons come in the back, well, you need about, it says that once you learn something for the first time, when you learn something for the first time, it takes about 72 hours I'm sorry, we need to review it within 72 hours or 48 to 72 hours. We need to review it again so it goes in your long-term memory. Let me say it again. It's like very crucial. It's very important why you have to review and why I'm telling you to review like this. It says that for something to go in your long-term memory, you must review that information between 48 to 72 hours. You must review that information. If you don't review that information, it's not going to go into your long-term memory. It's going to stay in your short-term memory, and you're going to forget it. This is why when people study Arabic, and they don't review their previous lessons, and when they get to the end of the course, or the end of the book in the course, they forgot everything they learned in the past, because they did not review. You need to review, read that thing again, read what you studied before, within um, 48 to 72 hours so it could go in the long term memory so you don't forget so how you learn Arabic on the go now it's crucial the key is that you don't forget your lessons that's the key you don't forget your lesson now if you have your class only for an hour or two hours that's okay it's not a big problem because one hour a week Add it up to a month, one, two, three, four weeks, that's four hours in a month of classroom time with a teacher, but when you include doing this two or three times a day for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, then you're increasing the hours that you're actually studying. So it might not be a lot in the beginning, but it's gonna add up, it's gonna add up. And you take all your new lessons and put it on front, not in the back, all right? Because the first lesson, that's the lesson you have to review within the 48 to 72 hours. The lessons, the previous lessons, is a lesson that you are reviewing every day. So they're gonna, it's already in the long-term memory. Every time you put a new lesson on the top, that old lesson is going in your long-term memory. The old lessons are going in your long-term memory, right? So having something like this and reviewing something like this every day, reading it, Every day reviewing it for 10 to 20 minutes, two times a day, your lunch break, going to work, coming home from work. When you get home, right after Salah, right after you pray, and this is how you do it. Now, for sisters who have children, she might say, but I don't have that type of time. I don't have a lot of free time with the kids because children, you know, they're doing multiple things, I might have two or three kids, I might be babysitting kids. Well, the best time for you to review with your children is when they're sleeping, it is when they're sleeping, when they take their naps. That's the time for you to review. When they're going to sleep, when they're taking a nap, in the nighttime, at nighttime, if you're not tired, at nighttime, or during the day hours, when they're taking a nap, or early in the morning, right before they wake up, this is the time for you to do this. So think about it now. Now children with kids. Now an, an individual who's busy also. This also could include you right after Fajr. Or before Fajr or right after Fajr. When the kids are still sleeping. If you're a mom, you, you're up, your kids are going to school in the morning time. And then like this, outside the house, this is the time for you to review. This is the time for you to learn. This is the time for you to review. When your kids come home, then there's a different story. They're busy, they're cooking like this so reviewing every day for 10 minutes these notes at least twice a day 
when the kids take a nap, if they're small, when they're going out to school, like this, while you're waiting to pick them up, while you're in a waiting session, maybe you're going to this school, and then you go to school early, and it takes five minutes or 10 minutes till the kids come out, then while you're waiting for them, you can review this. While they're napping and sleeping during the daytime, you could do this. If you have time for after Salah, then you do it after Salah. If you do it while they're sleeping, then you do it while you're sleeping. But you must take this method and do it every day. Do it every day. If you do it every day, first thing first is advice for everybody. It becomes a habit. It becomes a habit now. It becomes a habit. If you do it every day, it becomes a habit now. And like I said, the new lesson on top, not in the back. Because the new lesson, your goal when you're reviewing the new lesson is to put it in your long-term memory. For the old lessons that's on the bottom, then most likely you've been reading it already for two or three days, from one week to two weeks, from one month. And one month, if you have a lot of lessons written down, then you know after a month of doing this every day that you know at least these vocabulary are in your long-term memory or the subject that you're learning or the lessons that you have learned they are getting into your long-term memory and you'll find out that you don't have to review this that much all the time because only you need to review is the new lessons because the old lessons you know them like this they're easy now it's, it's in your head now after two or three months doing this then for sure all these things are going to your long-term memory and that is the goal the goal the goal, when you're learning Arabic and you're reviewing like this, that is the goal, that you're putting these things into your long-term memory. It does get complicated later on, not in the beginning stages, when you have a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, I have a lot of information, a lot of things I have to learn, this does not work for me no more. And it's something like this, for me, and working, that's why you're seeing this on top there, that I don't use this for anything except for something new or new subject I want to learn and I want to review it, the terminology. I'm using this maybe, I'm using this I believe for terminology. Some terminology that I learned in, in, in I'm still a Adif, that I need to have, you have them on the top of my brains. When I'm studying in thick, I have to have the terminology on the top of my brain, then I must, I use something like this so I can review every day so the, the terms will be in my long-term memory. But how I review all subjects, all things, and that's when you have to do a lot of reading Reviewing and reading books is another whole video on reading books and how to review reading books. That's another video That's not for now, but for the Arabic for those who's busy learning Arabic on the go now the classes The class time is very important. My other advice if you're in a class Whether it's where it's, I'm talking about face-to-face -face teacher or online class my advice is to record everything Why is that? Uh, I study the mache three days a week you see my stash from my, my I have a recorder. I stash it up here when my I'm going away to work. My kids don't be playing with it, so I stash it in there, right? So the recorder, you must have this for your lessons. So I wanna I wanna you see show you something. So this is one of my lessons. So this is my lesson with my teacher, right? The shake I study with. Why I do this? I'll show you why I do this and why this is important. Right? So you really can't hear what he's saying because the sound is kind of muffled. <clears throat> so I use this. And I use my passport. So this is my passport. You have my, my lessons from my teacher. So I have a multiple books on here. So when I record my audios, and actually there's a lesson you're going over book and not hold, right? So he's explaining stuff. So what I do is I take this, because I have maybe volumes of books that we've been over, different subjects we've been over. You can't, you can't store all of that on here. You can't even store it on your computer because it would take up all the memory of your computer unless you have a external uh, memory, which I use my passport for. It's a little dusty here. So when you, take, when you study Arabic and you have your classes, if you record them, you need something like this, my passport, right? 
I'm trying to think of the memory and it's very large. I spent a little like a lot of money on this, right? But there's more there's some that are have the memory is very is is got a lot of stuff. Um my uh um, um illiterate when it comes to some of this technology stuff. Buy buy depends on the gigs, the memory the size. Because I have volumes of books of doodles of my shit on here, all right? So when I take when you have a lesson, you record you need one of these and you record your lessons. So if you don't understand anything or you didn't, you miss anything, you can always go back to the audio to review and listen if you have the time. Right? You go back. Then I take this and put it on I download this from I upload it to my computer, do this. Sometimes I store some of them on my computer. Sometimes I put it here from here to here, then I put it on a fla flash drive so I can take it to work. Um, but I review lessons like that when I need to. If I want to re review a subject that I need to review with one of my teachers, that's something I study, I want to review it again. I go over my book, my notes, I go over the audio. Sometimes then I go over another audio from another shake online. I uh, just reviewing just to get it, hear it, and take it more notes, whatever. You need this. It's something you can use, a tool you can use even for the Arabic. Because when you study in Arabic, if you didn't get everything that you were saying, or you want to review what they said, you have this. You can use this. You can review this. So if you wasn't pay, paying attention in class, if you wasn't paying attention in class, like you should, especially a sister who have kids in the house, your children distract you, or you're distracted by the internet, many people get distracted by the internet, you have this to go back to review the class. Now, sister with kids, you know, I, I, it might be hard for them. You know, um, the kids are loud in the audio, and then you still can't hear it. You know, I don't know me. I'm from New York City. So in New York, it's loud everywhere in New York. Every New York is loud. So I can learn in a, in a loud environment. I can learn something in the, in the environment where there's a lot of noise in it. I can concentrate. I can filter out the other stuff and, and filter out what's not important and listen into what is important. As long as it's not the loudest overbearing or overwhelming the teacher where I can't hear their teaching and that's a different story. But if there's other people in the room, other distractions in the room, I'm a person who I can still study in this environment because New York is like that. This is New York. You know, especially people who have kids. I have children. My children are loud. But I don't study when my kids are in the house. I study my lessons when the kids are not here. Like right now, my videos are when my children are at school and I'm, I take my lessons with my teacher around this time. He didn't come today. Well, I take them around this particular time, right? So... I'm able to record it and I'll have my kids in the background and then I upload when it gets so loaded here then I upload it to here right and then I delete them from here and then I and I, then I put them in the files the name of the book the name of the curriculum the name of the uh, subject and the book the teacher the date who I studied it with I put it here and I upload the audios here I go back to the audios and review right so you can do this with your lessons because some some of these things like this one, you cannot go like select from one le lecture or one talk where you want to begin the talk. And you want to begin it in the middle or the end. You can't do that. You have to at least plug it in to the computer. So you have to buy one that has a plug where you can upload it to the computer. Like here, I have another one. I take it to me with the master, and I go to the master that I work at as an imam. And the Khatib, so was this one I use when I go to work. I record my talks with my coke balls, and you see right here, I can upload it to the computer. And it takes the same thing that goes for the phone. The same one for the phone, you use for your phone, you put it in here. I could take the lecture, and I could, and I could play it through my computer. I can play it through a device like the computer, my laptop, Chromebook, notebook, whatever. And the audios, I can select from the lecture when I want to hear it. And I use the same system when I want to upload it to something like uh, this. But this, you must upload it. This must be uploaded to the computer. And you upload the, this into the computer, and you put the file on this thing right here. All right? So... That's beneficial if you want to review the lesson or you didn't get the you felt you didn't get the much out that lesson because you couldn't hear or you wasn't paying attention, then you could go back and use a device 
like this on these audio devices. You see, I have one. I had this now for many years. I, I like it. I like the, but I just don't like the uh, the jack for it. It's not the one used for the phone. It's a little bit different. They're very expensive, and sometimes they don't um, connect to um, the computer well. But there's like some type of uh, weakness in the connection and stuff. And then you buy a new one, and after a while, it gets loosened up, and it doesn't work well. So I, I don't like it for that, but I like it because I could, uh, the quality of the audio is good, and the filing, how you have the files on it is good. But the other one I use for the mashing, I don't like how the files are made. You know, I have like maybe four or five sections for different files. So I'll put different type of topics from the rules are in. If it's thick, that's thick. If it's Akita, you know, one file is for Akita. One file is for thick, like this. Or... I just have it full, I just upload it to my computer, then if I have like been going over volume of books that have a few volumes, then one volume here, one volume in section file A, one volume in file B, one volume in file, C, in file C like this, you know, so I know um, what subjects are in that matter, and then sometimes I just, just upload all of them to one file, one section, and then just upload it to my computer like that, right? So. Why I'm mentioning this? Why I'm showing this? Why I'm mentioning this? I'm showing this because sometimes you don't get to hear everything. Sometimes something slips your ear. Sometimes you need to go back and you need to listen to what you studied from before or a reference or a point or a topic, you know, especially in the, in the, in the, in the lecture. They do have books online that are in Arabic that's read online and things like that that you can always go back and forth. I mean, lectures that are actually upload it to online you can always download like this but when you have talking about a one-on-one -on -one teacher maybe you ask some questions maybe you said some things in a certain way you can always refer back to the audio that's going to assist you with reviewing if you have the time to review the audio if you have time to review the audio some people might not have the time i don't even have time sometimes to review the audios but i review certain sections certain days just to get uh hear anything like a certain amount of times to make sure that I understood the point that he was making or I asked a question and I forgot the answer but I know he said the answer on the talk the when he was talking he said in the audio I go back and I use it for that actually and things like that so you know learning Arabic on the go and how to review it's very important reviewing is very crucial you know I show the I show the cards I show the material even if it's a book a small book you're reviewing do the same thing, read it after Salat, read it after this, because I need to go back now myself to review some stuff and to learn some stuff. I do the same type of system. After a while, you might get tired or you might not see no results, but the results are there, so you shouldn't quit because the results are there. Every time that you learn something, some things that you learn are results, you're going to be able to see it, realize it. Sometimes after you get to a middle stage, intermediate stage, a little more advanced stage, you're not going to see the results in yourself, but it's there, it's growing. You just need to be patient, right? You just need to be patient. So I think I answered or I gave my little advice on how to review or learn Arabic and review Arabic on the go. Learning Arabic and reviewing your Arabic on the go. Reviewing and learning, it goes hand in hand. You're not going to learn Arabic without reviewing. It's not going to happen. It's not. It's going to, because when you get to the next lesson, or further down the lesson from the teacher, you're gonna forget you forget the previous lessons, you're gonna find all the previous lessons have something to do with the new lessons that you're learning. So if you don't know that, you're gonna have a lot of problems. You're gonna have a lot of problems. You're gonna have a lot of problems, and you're gonna say, This is hard, this is hard. It's not hard, it's just your approach on learning. So approaches and learning is very important with Arabic. The approach on how to learn. How to review is very important. It's very, very crucial. You learn how to review in the Arabic, in learning the Arabic language. Reviewing is very important. And always remember when you review, it's from the beginning, your first lesson to the last lesson. Always. First to the last lesson, always. Even if you start getting, uh, uh, getting uh, it's a lot of stuff, it appears to be overwhelming, or you feel it's overwhelming, do not quit. Because doing that for two or three months, a month you can see results. But two or three months, you know for sure that information is, you know, 
it is it's in your long term memory. I don't use flashcards no more. I just have those flashcards. I need to reverse some terminology related to some signs of hadith. I need to review them because I want them to be solid in my memory now. Right? I want them to be solid in my memory. When I go to other subjects that I'm studying, you know, and I review, for example, There's a book on Arabic grammar, right? It's called Jami Durusa Ad Durusa Arabiya. Right? Monsu Afi Talata Ajaza. So this is uh, a collective of Arabic lessons in Arabic grammar. Uh, a section they made in this section in three parts or in the categories of three parts, like a encyclopedia, like right? In three parts, right? So this book. There's three parts in this book, so when I look at it, I want to review, for example, something like this. I go to the index. I'm not reading the whole book. I go to the index, and I go to things I highlighted in the index that are important. I recently, and I look at the index, ten ism, a tesmi, and a ten ween, a fitlu, and a harf. I'm looking at it, I'm reading. If I see something, I, when I'm looking at the index, I say, okay, I know this is about, I know what this is about. This I say, oh, this subject is a little bit of weekend. My memory is not too sure. I need to, I go back and I go review, I look at the chapter, especially if I took notes or I highlighted something in the book, and I go back and I look at the things I highlighted. I, I'll show you a better example from this book. This is an old book, Al Jumeir, right? It's a very old classic book on Arabic grammar. And if you see, if you can see, I highlight it. A lot of things in the book, right? Right? You see, I highlight a lot of stuff in the book, right? Highlight a lot of stuff in the book, right? So, and I have some things, some bookmarks like this. So when I go to, I read the index like a book like this. I read the index. That's how I review. When you get a lot of knowledge now, and you read a lot of things, and how do you review? And I said, I should make a separate video on reviewing books in Arabic, learning religion, religious study, now in Arabic language, reviewing. You know, I pick up a day of the week or something, some assumption I need to review. I teach it like I'm teaching now, Arabic, because I need to review it. While I'm teaching, because I review, I need to review. When I go to the books to review, I don't use index cards no more, because that's very time consuming. And now the subject matter, I can't put the subject matter on one or two cards. It's pages, it's a chapter, a whole book, some things, examples and stuff. I don't need them no more, the index card. The index card is building you to go to this up to here, right? So I look now at the Muqaddam, this is the introduction, and Tarif al Qalam. I want to skip through some of that. So you see, I circle something in the index, so I need to probably review sometimes. Alright? And noon, so khunu alamatu ala rafi'i fi fitli al mudara. Alright? So when I look at that, okay, I maybe need to review this. I look at the other section, I think about what this is about. You understand that I know how to review. I know what I'm reviewing. I'm reading it. I know what I need to do. And then if I just go to the subject, I go to a chapter that I have there highlighted why I need to review. All right? So this is have a lot of too much highlights actually. Actually, this is too much highlight. I don't do this no more. I don't highlight things like no more. I highlight what is important and I underline with a pencil some things are important. So this might be important. And you see, even here I took some notes, what I need to review. And this is many, many years ago, all right? This is many years ago when I read this book. And I studied this book with my um, teacher, right? So then I look at it, I take my notes. When I go to review, I look at my notes. Why I highlighted certain things. So why? Why? I don't need to read the whole subject. I don't read the whole chapter. I don't need to read the whole chapter, right? All right? So I highlight, I put lines on the certain things that need to be reviewed. I read this. So this is the set, this is the chapter. This is the, the metan of the text. This is the, uh, the metan is the text itself. With the, the, the actual book, and this is another scholar explaining this book. This is a, a text from the original book, and this is from the explanation of a scholar explaining these books. So, this is a line he's explaining. So, when I look at it, I highlighted the metan, the text, and the metan of the book, the text from the book. This is the commentary now. So, I look in, I know that I don't really review the commentary that much. I just need to review the text in this section. 
So I wouldn't, when I read this, I wouldn't focus too much on the commentary because maybe the text itself right here is self-explaining itself, right? So that saves me time. Did I go here? What was highlighted are the things I need to focus on. I highlight the things I need to be focused on, all right? So this section is highlighted. Then you notice I go to other parts of the book. This is a very important chapter. I highlighted some important things with definition, explaining certain things in text. But now I'm going to jump on another chapter in the book. Here, this is this. This is and Joab. This is something not too much important. So I didn't highlight too much things, right? These are like examples, right? So I highlighted something like this. This is related to this. I did something that for a reason, right? But this is like one of the first books in Arabic grammar. I study, so it's very important in the book. So that's why I made I highlight a lot of things in this book, right? I'm gonna go to another book. So there's a book and Nahu al right? And this is um a thanawi, this is like a book, the teacher's book. Um, so Ibtadiya, it's like a grade school level, right? I'm trying to think, Ibtadiya means in English like grade school or um, either means grade school. Yeah, we refer it to grade school or elementary school. It's not really elementary school Arabic, anyway. It's not really elementary school book, uh, but like grade school. And one of them is for then we are like for high school, right? The next book. So right here, you see in this book, if you can see, I don't have everything highlighted. I only have highlighted what is important. So this is Jamal Mufid, right? So you notice I don't have a lot of things highlighted because this is like exercises. So a juice of Jamal, I understand this section already, right? So you notice I don't have nothing really highlighted. There's nothing here highlighted, but. The only thing that's important to me that I need to highlight was important. So you see in this book, I don't highlight everything. This book, I didn't highlight. I only highlight what's important. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Some examples I highlighted to memorize and I go take my notes or go back to review the book. I know what to jump into and what to review. Right, here's the section and here's here. All right? And here is the Qa'id Arabi, the principles or the rule, which we're already focused on highlighting here. All right? So if I go deep into the book, this book have a lot of exercises you should do. Even the examples they give, I didn't highlight too much enough. Or maybe I, I, if I didn't highlight the examples they give because I understand, I highlight the kawaii that I need to review, the rule that I need to review, for example. And that's how you read reviewing books, basically, right? But I think I get deeper in the book. I even highlight some of the examples because there's benefits in the examples. So here, in this, in this exercise, all right, al hukmu and tamyiz al adad. It's related to numbers, right? All right, this is related to numbers. So I highlighted something with the grammar related to the numbers, not the whole sentence. Certain things, examples that when the book explain it, explaining this was the highlighted things, explaining it in detail, right? And you see, this is the kawaii. This is explaining the lessons, but this is showing the actual benefits. Al faida min hada dars. This is the benefit from that lesson, right? And I highlight that because that's what's to review. It's the qua'id, the foundation of that rule. What is the rule about? What is the, the, the grammar rule? It's rule. That's all I cared about and when I highlighted it. I don't highlight everything because when I go back to review the book now, I'm not going to read the whole book. I'm not going to read everything. I'm going to read what's the highlighted things, right? That's only in Arabic grammar. And I do the same thing with other subjects. And uh, whether it's Akida, whether it's Fiqh, whether it's Hadith, I do the same thing. So that's about reviewing. When you get to it after the index cards, that's how you start take reviewing subject matters now related to a book and having a teacher, the instruments that I use and things that I use, like this, like the book, how I highlight the book, how I use the index, how I have this for my audios, for my lectures and stuff, and going to a class. But you know, be living in America, and when you get to a certain level, sometimes you're not going to find the class in the masjid that's on your level, either or. 
there's no teacher in the math shit, or there is a good teacher, but the level of the people are not moving that well, or not growing up that fast. And if you know Arabic language, you don't want to take, you don't want to learn stuff in English no more. Once you have Arabic language, you start learning about the religion in Arabic language. You have the Arabic language. You don't want to go back to the English stuff because that keep your that, that, that you waste your time. You don't waste your time, but you start losing some of the Arabic language. So you want to be always learning Arabic in Arabic, learning the religion in Arabic, and learning grammar in Arabic. So these lessons that I explain on this page is eventually to get you two books like this and the other book I was showing you. Those lessons and these two books is to get you to a book like this, which is studying now Arabic in Arabic. There's no English in there. That's the purpose of the, that, those two books. And that's what I'm trying to help some people out. I'm not going to say you're going to master Arabic with those two books. You, you won't. But you'll be able to grasp a lot of things and especially add that on to other curriculum and other classes you're taking. You add that method. It will help you out a lot. So I hope this video is suffice. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make this really suffice for those individuals who wants to learn how to memorize, I mean, how to learn Arabic and how to review, how to learn Arabic and how to review while you are in a busy schedule. And I am your host and is, I am Ustaz Abu Bara Muhammad Amriki. And anybody ever have any questions on how to review, you can always comment on this video and I'll do my best to give you an answer, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadallahu wa ant. Mustafa Allah wa tubu ilayk.